everyone okay so i know you're like where the heck have you been so i have been mia it's probably been about a year since i've posted a good video um so i'm just trying to get back in the momentum of things and i'm going to be starting today with just a little update and then we're going to start working on a dress it will be a prom dress however um, it's not a specific order, so I'm going to be using generic or measurements that are from my mannequin. Um, but let's get into the updates. So, where have I been? Um, one, I mean, not an excuse because I haven't been pregnant this whole time, but I am expecting right now. So, I'm um, about six months right now. Um, I just got into my third trimester and I'm about ready to get this ball rolling to get this baby out, okay? Um, the experience could have been better for me, but at this point, I'm just trying to be positive about the whole thing. Okay. So with that being said, I'm hoping that I can create some type of schedule to get some good videos out. And I know a lot of you have been commenting under old videos and asking questions. I will be sure to try to get to every last one of those questions and respond to those comments. Um, and during the time that I have been gone, a lot of you have purchased, um, pattern packages so the prom pattern packages are still available some of you email me and ask about whether um they're available or if i'm still making them if you're looking at a really old video where we're doing where i'm cutting the patterns out from um interfacing no i'm no longer making the interfacing patterns where i'm actually cutting them out so if you order a pattern you will be ordering from my website and again i'll have that link in the description you'll order from my website and it will be um, a pre-printed package so it's not like one of those um, pattern packages where you have to buy and tape each piece of paper together it's going to actually be printed on a large roll of paper where you'll just have to cut out the patterns yourself um which i kind of thought was convenient um let me know what you think if you for the people who have purchased those pattern packages um just uh looking for some feedback on those if those are still working um i have gotten a lot of dms after people purchased and sent pictures in of what they were able to make with those packages so that was great um so they're still available please shoot over to my website if you're still interested in purchasing also on my website i know a couple of you have purchased um rhinestone bodices now, when it comes to the bodice, I know a lot of you um, purchase and sometimes you'll put uh, expedited shipping on that as well. However, the patterns, if you read the description, please read the description on all the items. The pattern, I mean, the um, rhinestone bodices, they take seven to ten days to get here no matter what type of shipping you purchase. So if that time frame does not work for you, then I will refund you your money and cancel the order. But normally before I process that order, um i usually reach out to you via email message or whatever you put on your um your info page when you place that order just to make sure and verify that you do want to proceed with processing that order even though it takes seven to ten days okay so um again we're going to be doing a prom dress today is going to have a glitter lace bottom and then a rhinestone sequin applique give me one second and then i'll show you guys the materials we're going to be using okay so here's um and i bought a ton of these a really long time ago from one of my vendors um however i never used them i was waiting to use them for some type of bridal since they were so gorgeous but this is one and I'm not quite sure if this one came with a back panel though, but I don't think this one did come with a back panel. But this is the front panel for this. So we'll be using this piece here. And again, rhinestone lace, which you probably all, oh, this is not even what I'm looking for. Hold on, let me go grab the rhinestone. I need the um, glitter lace. All right, so change of plans. We don't have, I thought I had some leftover, um, lace rhinestone i mean glitter lace fabric but actually it was a sequin lace fabric which i mean this one's really pretty too and i'll end up making a dress out of this which probably the second dress i made that looks like this 
um we are i still really do want to use this applique bodice so i'm going to use this bodice still and then i went to hobby lobby last week and they had a 40 percent off sale on fabric which their prices are really like normally i shop at joann's or I'll order online. But when I'm shopping local, like Joann's, they're overpriced like crazy. I don't care how many coupons they put in. They're overpriced. So Hobby Lobby already starts with a lot of their prices way cheaper. So to add 40% on top of that, I was like, okay, let me just grab some stuff. So I did get some black spandex because I always need black spandex regardless of making something regular or like, but I got enough to do a gown. Um, and then I have, of course, a lot of the, um, well, everything was on sale, so it doesn't even really matter about the season but um this is a crushed velvet stretch crushed velvet fabric and it's in green and then i got the same fabric crushed velvet and navy which these are both gorgeous so i'm gonna um i still got a couple more but i'm gonna use one of these fabrics along with this rhinestone bodice instead um i have this fuchsia it's not crushed it's a regular stretch velvet and I have a, like a silver or gray crushed velvet stretch fabric as well. So that's, actually I don't even like the way that looks. So that sucks. Um, we could probably, actually I have a whole nother plan for the pink. And in reality, maybe that's just the dress I just need to go ahead and make today. And then I think I have some, um, some rhinestone applique i'll probably add on top of that too so okay boom that's what we're gonna do we're gonna just go ahead and do the pink i'm all over the place y'all like lord so i'm just gonna go ahead and do the pink fuchsia um dress that i had in mind i'll insert a picture of the inspiration dress that um i have and then i'll um you guys can see how it gets changed up just a little bit and then yeah we can go from here um thinking about the measurements for the mannequin um i have a size eight mannequin so the bust is about 34 waist is 26 inches the hips are 38 inches and yeah so those are the measurements that we're probably going to use for this and I, I like to drape a lot so i'll probably be draping a lot of this so yeah, so let's get started. I'm gonna go ahead and remove the dress that's currently on my mannequin. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and sketch out what the dress is gonna look like, add my measurements in, and get to cut in. Okay. Okay, so this is the original design. And we're gonna be using the fuchsia. So I just changed the neckline part just a little bit, but for the most it's the same. It has the one sleeve and we have the corset middle we'll be using like a really sheer mesh and then the skirt part well all of it is going to be the fuchsia mat uh the fuchsia stretch velvet this is going to be our back we're going to have some boning and stuff in the back and of course we're going to have to create our own casing for this so that the casing in the corset matches the actual dress um we have we'll have a zipper here coming down the back it is going to be um, a turtleneck not a really high turtleneck but a good turtleneck and then we'll have a small train in the back but it's going to be a mermaid so we're not going to do a full circle skirt for the mermaid skirt part we're just going to use the regular flare mermaid skirt um and then i'm going to be adding some beading and rhinestone and stuff along on the dress as well and then you'll see the mannequins um measurements here 34 26 38 and this is our mannequin. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna start with, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the skirt out because it's the easiest part. And then after the skirt, we're gonna be um, draping on the mesh for the corset, and then I'll drape the top and then create the boning. And yeah, so just hang out with me while I'm getting that done. All right. All right, so um, I went ahead and also added what our pattern for the most part is gonna look like. Um, again, I still don't really use patterns as much um, because it kind of, I could use my own patterns, but it kind of is just a repetition at this point. So I kind of already know the shape of everything and I just usually would sketch it out like this just so that I have a visual of what I'm going to be cutting 
and um so this is what we're working with for our skirt i haven't done the top of the dress yet because again i like to drape the top except the sleeve um so for our skirt part um, we know our measurements. Again, this is stretch velvet fabric. So since our fabric stretches, we don't have to use exact measurements. Sometimes I remove about two inches off of each measurement. So here we're working with the waist. Um, I'm using six and a half, but this is on the fold. So this is the front of our skirt. This will be on the fold. Um, six and a half for our waist, nine inches for our hips. I usually like to keep the knee around a similar um, measurement as our waist but with the knee we could use seven or we could use six and a half depending on how much of a tightness you want around the knee and your position of where you're bringing tapering this in at so if this is above the knee it's easier for her to walk if it's right at the knee which is where i kind of like mine just for the dramatic effect um we're going to bring this in just a little bit tighter but again since it stretches she shouldn't have any issue walking all right so with um i used a uh, five six height which is about the average height um and then now i also have our waist to knee measurement which is 20 inches our knee to floor measurement which is gonna be 24 inches i always add heels for six inches and i usually don't mind adding a lot into this because for dramatic effect it depends if the client doesn't want a whole lot of dress in the front which is usually for pictures not really comfortable for walking which you have to pick the dress up or bustle the dress so um i always usually stick around 30 for the most part even with my short girls unless they really don't want it that long and then i can always cut it okay so we're going to keep that 30 this is our front and then this is going to be our side seam i add five inches on the side seam just so that it could taper a little bit longer so that when we get to the back it continues to get longer and longer in the back we'll add a go day here and our go day is going to be longer than the 40 inches as well just so we have a train and i love how that looks when you gradually add to the train going around um so you see our waist to knee 20 inches and then our knee to floor 30 inches which is our front add the five inches on the side seam this is on the fold don't forget that also when it comes to velvet fabric you have to watch um what the fabric looks like in the lighting because if you flip the fabric one way versus the other way it can look darker or lighter which makes the color look a little bit different so for the back of our dress we're going to be cutting out two so this is not on the fold you cut two for this one so this is a full seam and of course i love to sneak a little zipper in here it makes it easy when you hide the zipper in the seam um, again, it's still six and a half inches. Don't worry about the seam allowance only because this fabric does stretch and I didn't remove a lot of inches from the actual measurement. Same nine inches for our hips, 35 so that it matches the seam side seam. And then we have our back seam which goes to 40 so that when we add our go day in, the go day will um, extend this and look even longer so that it'll come out like a full mermaid. So sort of like, and then your go day could be just as wide as you want for more flare effect, but we do. So, so say for instance, when I'm ready to cut my go day out, we're going to have this be 40. This is going to match the 40 here, but then this might be 50. I'll add the 10 inches here on the length and this will be on the fold. So this is folded. So that way your other side connects to the other side of this skirt. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get started with cutting out the skirt part and then after that we'll start on um, the top of the dress. Okay, so first we're going to start with cutting out the front piece of the dress. And again, if you remember that this is on the fold. So we're just going to cut out um, the length that we're going to use, the full length. And then we're going to measure the front measurement all the way down and create the mermaid front panel
a curve um, from the long side to the short side to create our go day. Okay, so now we're gonna be draping the corset part um, since I have my scissors. So our whole skirt is cut out. So now we're gonna be draping the corset part. Our whole skirt part is cut out already, so um, we're gonna start working on the top. I already pinned a couple pieces down. Now, um, this is just gonna be the front. So I'll cut underneath the tape on the mannequin and I'll leave about a half an inch to an inch seam allowance on the sides. So this is one of my favorite meshes. It's just so perfect for colored skin because you know they don't give us a whole lot of options sometimes. So I'm gonna cut some of this off because we don't need it. The back will have its own pieces. All right, so now I'm gonna put some darts in here and our darts are gonna be a long, um, really don't need it on that seam because this seam is gonna be open. There's gonna be one boning here. There's a diagonal boning that goes from under the bust to meet the middle boning. I'll probably do a second one from under the bust to meet the side boning. So we don't wanna put a, a um, dart here because we'll be able to see the dart. So instead, we're gonna try to pull our mesh taut so that way we don't have any real gapping, at least not. So we want our waist to fit good. So we pull that side tighter. Some of my pins are so bent. This side a little tighter. which means our dart is gonna end up on the side right here. If you can see, so we'll end up having a dart right here, which is fine because also we're gonna have some solid fabric here too. So I'm gonna leave our dart here. Put a pin. Okay, and now we're gonna come to the other side. So we're gonna end up having a dark on the side. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this because what happens, um, the solid piece will be cuffing under the boob, but I'm going to leave these pieces here instead of cutting them out. Normally I will cut them out, but I'm, I'm gonna leave them. So what I'll do, I'll just have to hand sew, or I can still mach machine sew the solid top piece onto here, but it'll just have this. And if later on I decide that this piece is in the way, I'll cut it out. But for right now, I'm just going to leave it for stability. So let me pull this just a little tighter. All right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and cut off a little bit of the excess on the sides. Okay, first of all, I don't know how much you guys have seen because my camera ran out of space. But um, so we finished draping the front. This is the front here. And now we're going to be draping our back part. And this is all just for the corset. I know it comes up a little higher than the corset, but um, it's going to be fine. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to cut the bottom of the mesh out. Up the side, half an inch still, or an inch for right now until we're... Okay. 
All right, so we're done with this because we, oh, well, we actually need a small piece later on. All right, so this is our back. Like I was saying before, you'll see that there's a little bit of extra space. We won't need two darts in the back. We're gonna put, we're gonna gather the space, the extra fabric up into the seam where the zipper is gonna go in the middle. So that's the next thing we're gonna do here. So, um, yeah. So I'll just pull this and pinch it like a dart. All right, so then we're gonna cut that extra fabric out right here, but after we cut that out, we're still gonna cut the seam down the middle too. So the back will be two pieces. finish this we're gonna go ahead and go right into the velvet piece that goes on the top too all right so I'm going to cut this and I'm going to leave a little bit of room just for some error so then we are going to cut that piece out so then we have still a little bit extra here we're going to make sure we cut straight up the seam to the back boom I don't need this much in the back, so I'm gonna cut a little bit of this off. Again, this is getting hidden behind the um the other fabric anyway. That's our back, our front. All right, so now we're gonna take all of our um, little pieces that we had cut out that we had that was big enough, salvage pieces. So we're gonna take some of these and then we're gonna start draping our top. Um, let's look at the picture again just to make sure that we're doing it correctly. And we're gonna drape our back too. So again, this is our picture. So yeah, so let's start on this side. We do want this part to stretch though. So I'm gonna start here. Excuse me. So we're gonna come just a little bit below. part is we're gonna come to our sleeve even though this side does not get a sleeve oh it just wants the thunderstorm it's just all this heat and then we're gonna come a little under the bust here and then we will probably have a dart here which is fine because it's also getting covered up by beading. 
compassion side, um, I think there should be enough support. So here you'll see we have the bias tape to create the edge for the top piece. And we also measured out our boning strips to fit the dress and the corset piece. So the zipper is missing, of course, in the back. And our next step will be to actually sew down the channels for the boning to the mesh. Okay, so now that our boning channels are sewn into the mesh, of course, we'll have to go ahead and put in the actual boning. And then attach the corset to the bottom of the skirt. So I'll pin the boning channels just so that I can have them in place and straight for when I actually sew them down. And now you can pretty much see the final product of the dress. I did not put sleeves in yet. However, this is the gist of what we're working with. And with this type of dress, I'll end up putting a regular hem on the bottom. Um, you have the choice for a regular hem or the horse hair trim which makes the bottom a little bit more sturdy and gives it that curly look on the bottom